In this video, we're going to take a look at the 10-year. We're going to focus entirely on the 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, the FOMC meeting happened today, um, and the press conference happened afterwards with Jerome Powell. Um, and of course, as per usual, Jerome Powell was jawboning um, about the Fed using their tools, uh, whatever those might be. Obviously, we know we're talking about QE. Uh, keeping interest rates low as much as possible. Uh, a lot of people expecting, seemed for some reason, to be expecting the Fed to uh, perhaps think about uh, pulling back a little bit on its uh, economic assistance, uh, tapering off, I suppose. And for some reason, I mean, I don't know, I feel like the market was pricing in uh, that the Fed was going to do something. Um, and it's really interesting to look at what happened uh, intraday, uh, because uh, overnight, um, in the wee hours of the morning, I should say, we spiked up real high, actually above this critical uh, resistance. And uh, I posted a tweet earlier about um, this potentially being um, warning signs, um, and that we would have to wait and see what was going to happen uh, at the press conference. And then uh, the yield came right back down, and then during the hour in which Powell gave his uh, press conference or started to give his press conference, and when the uh, initial remarks uh, came out from the Federal Reserve, it dipped down real low, tried to come back up, bounced down from this uh, descending trend line. Uh, it's a long-term uh, prime trend line. Came way down here, lost a whole bunch of percentage, uh, a couple percentage points, and then Interestingly, the 10-year has come back up, and you can kind of see it's kind of bouncing around here. I think a lot of people expected that when the Fed said what, when Powell said what he did, that that this was, oh, this was market moving, that the 10-year was going to collapse now because the Federal Reserve was going to continue its, uh, its QE purchases. Uh, they were going to continue to uh, be accommodating uh, until they have unemployment down to, to regular levels and achieve inflation over 2% for a long period of time. And I think what what's interesting to come back again uh, on the eight hour time frame, if you really think about it since, you know, since August, you've been seeing a slight, you've been seeing the steady rise. And then when we hit the new year, um, after an initial spike and in retrace, we've been just climbing, climbing, climbing ever since then. Just a, a real huge increase in a relatively short period of time. And so, as a lot of people expected, when this news hit, the, the DXY took a huge dip. Now, there's something that's really interesting because a lot of people, I think, are acting as if increasing yields means the DXY must come up. Okay, but what's really interesting is right around the beginning of August when you started to see yields rising, you had the DXY basically sideways. And then when we got into late November, we took a tumble down. We broke through critical support, continued to come down, and then kind of consolidated around before this recent, uh, before this recent move. And so I, I, just, I just think people are, they're wrong when they think that just because yields are coming up means the DXY has to come up, or if yields are going down, it means the DXY has to come down. Because look what happens here. The DXY came down and it stayed down. There's no, I mean, we didn't wick down and retrace up. It stayed down. And as you can see here at, you know, 8.37 p.m. Eastern time, uh, we're, we're coming down even further. Okay, now let's compare that to the 10-year. If I, my computer will load. You can see on the 10-year, we, we just wicked down and came back up before the close. And, and just a little bit ago, we had the 10-year already trying to come back up to breach this support level again. Now, is it possible that you know we're going to bounce around a bit up here and then come down? Sure. Yeah, of course that's possible. But it's also possible that the yield will come back up retest a couple of these levels and keep resuming upward. Uh, it Just because the Fed is accommodating doesn't mean that yields can't continue to go up. And just because the yields go up, 
or down doesn't mean the dxy has to be correlated to that. It doesn't have to be. I think what's been happening is as yields have been coming up, uh, people have been, the, the market has been in the corrections. Like if we kind of come over here and look at our, our indexes, uh, especially the NASDAQ, as we came down into our correction, I think a lot of people were thinking, were, were the, the market was pricing in, the Fed was going to, uh, was going to start curtailing some of what it was doing in helping the markets. But as you can see, like in all the equity markets, what happened after uh, or during and after Powell's remarks, the, you know, the indexes shot up. Um, they did retrace a little bit, kind of like the 10 year did, but uh, for the most part, they went back up. The NASDAQ was negative and it ended up positive on the day. So, I think what's happening is, I think the reason why we could, I'm not saying, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I'm just going off of what I think price is suggesting right now. Um, I think what could happen is we're going to continue to see rates, yield rates go up, even as the DXY comes down. Because what the FOMC meeting and Powell's remarks have showed is that the Fed is going to continue to accommodate. They're going to continue QE purchases. That means that the dollar is going to be weak, devalued. And because you have federal government stimulus, federal government spending, we've already had another $1.9 trillion package this year, and there's going to be another later this year. Uh, it's going to continue to create dollar weakness. That's why you see uh, other currencies strong against the dollar, uh, ever, especially ever since then. So I think what was going on was People were getting nervous, and I think that's why the dollar was getting bid up, because they were concerned that rising yields meant that uh, the Fed was, th that there was something going on behind the scenes that was ultimately going to uh, make everybody return to the dollar. And I think a lot, there were a lot of people online, on YouTube, on Twitter, that were suggesting we would have another dollar milkshake. And I don't know, you know, is it is it possible? Yeah, anything is possible. But... I don't, I don't see that happening. I think the dollar is going to continue to be weak. And I think that what happened today was a confirmation that the Fed was going to continue to accommodate. And look, everybody gets concerned about these dot charts and things like that. But the reality is whether, I mean, the, the Fed continues to jawbone, but they keep saying they're going to accommodate until at least 2023. That means we'll probably continue to see dollar weakness relative to other currencies into probably into 2023 unless something happens unless we have a crisis which i don't i don't think it will happen um like a dollar shortage or something like that you know maybe i don't think so though with the amount of liquidity pumped into the system what is it like 25 percent or so of the liquidity in the markets was created in the last year i see i don't i don't see the dollar shortage so i don't see the dollar shooting up um, I think that what we've seen in this rise uh, in yields, I, I think it could continue, but I don't think the dollar strength will ultimately continue. And I think that inevitably, even if, if yields did come up, that was unsustainable, and the dollar did start to come up as a result, I, I think once we pass this level, let me turn my auto off, once we pass this level, you know, the two, uh, what do we got here? It's, it's a little over the two mark. I think that's the next critical level. And... I think we could get there if yields break this resistance and retest and successfully resume off. It's possible, okay? Um, I think if we get to two, I think the Fed will step in. And then that will inevitably uh, lead to more dollar weakness. So all that is to say that I think that you can count on, again, as we've seen for months now going forward, that the dollar will continue to be weak whether or not yields are rising. Okay, so I think now the market has confidence that the dollar is going to continue to be weak in spite of yields. And so I think that uh, you're going to see uh, a lot more, uh, you know, dollar shorting. I think that's I think that you're going to continue to see that. Um, so if you're trading Forex, then uh, I think you should plan accordingly. Um, and uh, and I think that this means equities are going to continue to rise. I don't think we're going to see a crash. I don't think we're going to see a, a, 
a, a large correction, especially considering we just got on the NASDAQ, uh, on the, the sector that everybody's rotating away from with all the tech stuff, we've seen a, a pretty good correction already. So um, I think we're just going to continue to go upward. Um, obviously, anything can change, um, but that's the way I see it going forward for now. Thanks for watching this video. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe if it was helpful to you or if you learned something, um, share it. Um, with a friend, somebody that you think might learn something from it. Um, thanks for watching.